Hey everyone, Dave here. Welcome to a new Raid Shadow Legends video. Today's video, I would say, is the most important video for players who are like 12 months into the game, uh, around a year into the game, moving from mid-game to end-game. And I'll tell you why when we start talking about how to optimize your clan boss team, how to give it that final push so that you're consistently getting the best rewards in the game. Because this is going to be a longer video talking about different well more than one clan boss comp uh, and also we'll talk about dps options what considerations you should you should think about and all of that i'll keep the timestamps in the description below um, and yeah you can just browse the video based on the timestamp if you're looking for a specific clan boss comp that you're trying to build what considerations and all of that before we start let me mention a couple of things first so plarium buffed ogre as you can see i didn't i didn't go for the fusion that we were talking about boycotting spending or even that ridiculous fusion with no additional fragments and as expected plarium buffed him to enhance his passive while the fusion is still on they cannot claim that they didn't know that when they released him so why wasn't his original kit uh like adjusted before release so that we'll decide better whether we want him or not the only reason i can i can think of is that they want to push people who didn't go for him like me for to like chase chase much harder the remaining few events and then of course you'll have to buy the fragments because you skipped quite a few so buffing him midway through the fusion was their plan all along i cannot actually i cannot see any good intentions behind this so basically you all like uh, interacted greatly with my previous video talking about jig eggs and what's happening and supporting the view of like a thought of at least a one month boycott of any spend in the game till they fix it uh but yeah thing is what plarium is giving us for our outrage is just a middle finger with that recent update so our main clan this is our uh my main account we are in game players you see here like we finished second in the uh, most recent hydra clash probably i'm one of the least damage dealers in the clan nowadays but yo okay mystical tomb i think they enhanced uh oh that's all i got okay <laughs> so anyway so that's our clan i think we have a couple of spots open uh, because of people who lift so if you are an in-game player beating getting high damage not only when keying uh of course traditional clan boss is is a given but i'm talking about if you're active putting in your hydra keys we don't have any other requirements just getting high damage on brutal hard and, and normal using your three weeks weekly to help us with hydra clash we have a tiny requirement like you can see it here 75k for personal rewards we just want to make sure that people are active and you have to be active on discord we are a chatty bunch we like to talk a lot and a, gr a, a great group of friends i would say so if you're an in-game player sick of your like high requirements of your plan a clan or whatever hit me on discord and i can invite you to the clan it's a great clan the only problem is the leader of the clan but yeah we're bearing with him i guess yeah so also on our free to play account i won't talk much about the free to play in this uh, video but we're crushing it we still have spaces because we have some inactive players in the clan we upgraded to a level two we're crushing our second uh clan v clan we need active players who are active on daily basis um hopefully on discord also uh, and getting just top chest from hard and brutal clan boss daily just to help the cl clan grow if you are an early uh, game player and you're serious you're getting hard pushing into brutal clan boss uh, hit me on discord the, the, it's always in the description below and you can join our early game free to play clan void guard now let's start talking about the main event which is upgrading your clan boss team so you can get that extra damage one year into the game if you are farming your gear properly and if you got lucky with a couple of unkillable champs you should be three keying ultra nightmare one keying nightmare without unkillable champs that would be a bit hard 
unless you get lucky with other champs like a light protectors and you have really good gear but let's talk about like uh, the traditional state of the majority of players if you get unkillable champs and there is a bunch of them now um, some of them are non-void champs so it's easier than the double man eaters that it used to be before so you when i was showcasing my crazy account to our lucky secondary account here and i was talking about that i'm three keying ultra nightmare one keying nightmare and i'm looking forward to push to that two key ultra nightmare one key nightmare just to give myself that spare key for brutal or just to skip it on some days uh, I, th I said it might not be doable with a low level of gear well well not low but yeah without crazy level of gear unless it's a two two to one comp which i don't have right now i'm missing seeker i'm missing some ally attackers and a bunch of other champs on this account uh, that started like a brainstorming discussion between myself and two friends on discord and i'll show you what they helped me with today but we got there we got our two key uh, i could have just like showed you the final result which comp i used and why but i actually want to take you through the thought process what we thought about what we tried to do there and how many trials it took me because you'll spend gems i think i spent at least 500 gems trying keys and i spent all the silver i think i had like 30 million saved just adjusting gear and adjusting the comp to try i changed masteries i did that this and that so i want to take you through that thought process that you will also will go through while building this choices which team which champs and then when i get to the final team i settled on with the level of gear of one year old account i'll tell you why i chose this team and why probably it might be the best option for you as well if you have the same champs if not i will display two other teams that you can choose from depending on the champs uh, that you have and you can build your team if you're not there yet these teams can help you get to that at least three key ultra nightmare or two key if your gear level is good and you have good damage dealers which is one of the main points we'll talk about to get to the two key um, if your gear is strong enough you might even get to one key but yeah probably that's taking it a bit too far one key is very hard unless you're you're running a two to one comp but yeah let's start talking about it then so um you shout out to the two people i'll, I'll talk more about them uh, here so when i did this i got a comment from one of my subscribers we became friends on discord a great guy jp so jp commented on that video and said why are you saying it's not doable unless it's two to one comp i'm doing it on my account uh, he's doing an emic warcaster comp which is one of the many variations for the metha comps uh, because the metha can replace warcaster in this uh, comp of course but he is doing an emic uh, warcaster comp on his account and he got to that two key ultra nightmare one key nightmare I asked him to share the details with me so I can show it to, to you and he did something even better. What JP did is he actually created a video on his channel, on his new channel, showing that comp. I want, like, it, uh, it's a very detailed video. I love how he's ex explaining it. I'll just show you snippets from the video, but I'll add it in the description below. So go check the video if you have Emic and if you have any other one turn. Um one turn block damage or well there is no one turn unkillable but one turn block damage champ with three turn cooldown you can use that exact comp he explains it perfectly so i won't steal his thunder go watch his video he's explaining everything there and i'll leave a link to the video and his channel show him some support he's starting on youtube oh you can see his channel here behind me so this is the comp basically so what he's depending on and like I said, I'll be very pre brief because if you want that comp, I want you to go watch his video. He's depending on Emic and Warcaster. Those are his, in, his unkillable options. Um, but one of the things with those type of comps, now I start detailing, talking to you about the thought process of why, why choose this or that. So one of the, the drawbacks, let's say, of that comp is that you need to have a debuff cleanser for the spirit affinity and the stun uh, or well mainly for the stun but you need a debuff cleanser or someone who puts up 
block the buffs on a three turn cooldown. In his case, he's using Skathix, but anyone can sub that. Uh, so you only have two spots open for damage dealer, for DPS champs. And you, you need to make sure that they are properly built so that you can reach that two key damage potential. Luckily, and why you should think about those comps if you're only one year into the game, the speed requirement for the DPS champs is quite low for that composition. Yes, unkillable champs will have to go a bit faster for that 4-3 re ratio, but the DPS for all the three comps that, that I will be showing you today uh, is quite low, which allow you to put accuracy and crit rate and crit damage on them to enable them to do more damage. You see here he's, ex he's explaining the masteries for his Geomancer, why he chose those masteries and all of that. Uh, what you need, what masteries to avoid. He got a great way of explaining things. Um, and if we go towards the end of the video, because he's showing the actual run. So please go watch his video if you're interested in more details about this one. I think this is the Ultra Nightmare run. And probably... Let me see here. And he's showing the presets on the screen while playing it. So you see here, this is comfortably a two key on Ultra Nightmare because he got almost 40 uh, million damage uh, with Frozen Banshee and uh, Geomancer. So go watch uh, JP's video. I'll link it in the description below. This is our first comp uh, with the speeds and everything detailed in the video that you can um, run for your two key Ultra Nightmare. Now let's jump to, so I couldn't make this comp work and it wasn't doing enough damage with me. The only thing, I don't have Warcaster, but I have Demetha, so I tried it with Emic and Demetha. Um, and the problem was that third slot that's going to be occupied by uh, a cleanser or a block debuffer. So yeah, it didn't work out for me. It works perfectly for JP. Go work, go watch his video. This is a huge shout out to my clan mate, Rugby Runner. Uh, he spent gems, he spent his resources, mag like actually building this comp on his own account. So I won't waste too many resources um, on the Ecclesia on the secondary account. So love you, man. Thank you so much for helping me with this. Um, what he was focusing on is what I requested from my clan mates is uh, a full O2 clan boss comp because I didn't want to manual for five or six turns or whatever. And the only comp that allowed this with slow enough speeds were the Myth Tower comp. Basically, you're depending on two block damage champs, a two turn champ like Roshkar the Tower, uh, and a one turn champ like Demitha. Uh, the only thing here is that I, I replaced Roshkar. Here are the speeds and everything. You will need either, again, in that comp, you'll need either a cleanser or a debuff blocker. In my case, what uh, rugby helped me with is that we built that comp with Helicath. Why is Helicath in my thought process? Why is Helicath much better, one of the best unkillable champ there? Other than the two turn block damage, his passive makes him take like those A1s, hit the clan boss for those additional war master procs. Uh, every time someone is hit with block damage on, which in that comp would be every time while the comp is running. And he can do damage, he can apply weaken on the clan boss. So with the speed, build him with crit rate and crit damage, his defense based, build him tanky. He will be useful here and you can also use him probably around the same speed in other places like uh, Sand Devil maybe or uh, probably in Iron Twins, it's what I'm thinking about. But yeah, Helicath is one of the best champs. He, he was a fusion, but probably if you haven't been playing for too long, you won't uh, have him from the fusion. But these are the speeds. Again, the main factor here is that the, the, can you see it behind me? Probably not. So yeah, here it is. So again, I'll, I'll keep the links in the description below, but the damage dealing champs in this specific comp got low speed so you can stack them with accuracy and damage. My only problem is that, so I did make it work and I'll show you a quick replay of uh, when I built it is that it has only two slots for damage dealers and my gear wasn't good enough to achieve that two key limit with damage dealers. So let's see the replay for this one. I moved myself a bit so you can see uh, the comp behind me 
Um, so this was my trial for this comp and what I tried it with Geomancer, Helicath, I used Pythium because he was around the speed I needed anyways and he was booked so he had it on 3 turn cooldown but any cleanser or bro block debuffers of course the cleanser will have to go after the stun uh, the block debuffers will have to go before the stun this is very important I'll tell you about the good and the bad in this comp and then I'm just using Ruella be, be careful, Ruella is a very tricky champ to use because she boosts the turn meter of the whole uh, team I disabled her A3 that does that, but I needed her for the damage and for the decreased defense and weaken. And then I have Demetha. So my two unkillable champs are Demetha and uh, Helicath with my two damage dealers in Geomancer and uh, Ruella. Uh, I was just trying. And I'll tell you about the second part here and Pythium for the block debuffs. When you're trying to build or tune your unkillable comp, you focus on first thing is speed tune. If the speed works, if the team survives till uh, turn 50 on spirit affinity, all affinities, uh, the unkillable champs don't get targeted with the stun and all of that good stuff, then you start playing around with DPS or damage options. Uh, replacing them, like you'll see, that I'll show you actually the replay here. So here I'm showing on the screen the speeds and the builds and what uh, priorities I set for the champs in case you want to replicate the same that I've done, feel free to pause the video at these points and uh, just take a screenshot. Now I'm getting into the run. So that first run was just making the speed tune work. One of the important things, a couple of things about that comp. So Pythium puts out a two turn block debuffs, which is great. And how the speed tune worked in this comp is that the meta with her buff extension goes directly after him so block debuffs is always on on the team it doesn't matter who gets tar targeted with uh, the stun from the clan boss because everybody got the uh, block debuffs so that's one great thing about that specific comp any champ who applies two turn block debuffs followed by the mytha uh, buff extension will work perfectly on th in that comp of course, this team comps, I think, in turn 5 or 6. But one of the great advantages about uh, this comp, it works on Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare, full auto from the start, with the same presets that I just showed you in the beginning. So I won't let you watch it all. You see it's running all the way to turn 50. My only problem when I got to the end of this run, as you can see, the damage potential is not even a 3 key damage. So my damage potential was too low with that specific comp. But the good news is, or is it? No, it's not even a 3 key. But the good thing was that I made the speed tune work. So that was my first try. So I said, okay, I made it work. Now let's think about what damage dealing options we can add to that comp. The th second try, I didn't record it from the beginning because the speed tune is exactly the same. But what I've done here, I just replaced Geomancer by Akmetum for the A1 poisons, as you're seeing on the screen, to check for damage. So that's what I've done here. You'll see it will run all the way exactly the same. Important thing is the meta going after Pythion to, to increase the duration of those block debuffs. And you'll see here, this team actually gave me better damage. So thinking about different options here, I think we got to 23. Uh, uh, okay, I think this is the end of it. 23 million, which is still a bit low. That's not even a three key comp. So I had to rethink my whole process then. And that's when I got to that final comp and that's how the thought process goes. So what was my problem with that composition here? And with the first one that uh, JP suggested for me is that uh, we have two champs applying the block damage or unkillable, but we don't have anyone applying the block debuffs, which is why the double man eater comps are so popular because they, they are applying both the unkillable and the block debuffs. What is the problem with them? Well, not a problem because everybody's using them and it's perfect for most players. Uh, 
The, the thing with the double man eater comps is that probably you need seeker for the famous bad eater or someone to boost uh, the speed there like deacon and you need pain keeper so that those four turn unkillable is decreased to a three turn and you'll have it at the end of every clown boss uh, turn uh, that's why emic is so so powerful in that comp and the comp that I'll, sh I'll just show you. And this is my final comp that I've settled on. Uh, when Emic Fusion was released, I released a video saying that he's an unkillable champ. Like he's basically like unkillable champ, not man eater because he doesn't apply block uh, debuffs, and pain keeper both in the same champ. If you have your unkillable team set, you don't have to go for him. He's good, he's very good, but he's not top tier. I think I a little bit underestimated him at this time. So I apologize if you decided not to go for the fusion based on my advice. Uh, he turned out to be more powerful than I thought. I Why? was thinking that I tried two different comps and the problem with both comps was that I have only two DPS champs in the comp. For my level of gear, I need three damage dealer champs, three damage dealing champs to reach that two key uh, level with my current gear stats and everything. To do this, I need to depend on a comp where two champs only can provide unkillable and the block the buffs. One of the very few, um, I think it's not even one of the very few, the only comp, the only clan boss comp that can provide this. So you have two, two champs providing all you need is the Emic Man Eater comp or as they call them, let me bring them on the screen. The Heart Eater comp. Emic will do the unkillable on the first turn and he will reset Man Eater's uh, unkillable to be on a three turn cooldown. And Man Eater will put his unkillable and block the buffs for always for before the stun. So these two can cover you from all aspects of unkillable and stun and all of things. And then you have three absolutely open slots for damage dealing champs. You can bring poisoners, you can bring decrease defense and weaken, you can bring ally attackers here. Like with three strong ally attackers, basically this, uh, this can be a one key comp. And look at the speeds of the damage dealing champs. Both of these are going at a 4-3 ratio, I think, yeah, probably. And the three damage dealers are going to add a 1-to-1 one one ratio. This is the slowest speed comp that can give you such uh, damage. That's why it's so amazing. Um, and that's why I ended up using it. Sweet JP, another shout out to, to Sweet JP is that he helped me also with the tuning for this on my account and he sent me uh, the plan from the uh, Deadwood Jedi's calculator and everything. Um, there is a very important call out here. This team is full auto. You'll notice it here when you check the links, please do. On Ultra Nightmare, this is full auto with the preset. Yeah, it's visible. On Nightmare, you'd have to manual just for two turns because there is a delay on Man Turn um, applying Man Eater applying his A3. So on Ultra Nightmare, on Nightmare, it will, you'll use exactly the same AI setup. You just manual for a couple of turns and then put it on auto. This is the replay. Um, as as always, like you see here, let me. Okay, you're seeing it. So th these are the stats and the priorities for the AI setup. Full auto, the only important thing is the speeds, and of course for the damage dealing champs, like here, Frozen Band, Shiruela, and Acrisia, and you have to, to give them enough accuracy if they need accuracy or damage dealing stats so they can do the damage here. Uh, full auto from the start, as you can see on the screen, yeah, you can see auto behind me, on Ultra Nightmare, and on Nightmare, you, you'll just um, uh, manual the first couple of turns, like I said. So... You can see here, like, I'll leave it running for the first few turns and then I'll show you the damage at the end. But this is a perfect composition here. And I turn to Frozen Banshee because Frozen Banshee with her um, poison sensitivity and A1 applying poisons. Now I'm playing around with damage dealers because what I really want is to get Acrisia out of that comp. If you haven't been watching the previous videos, this is the Crazy Lucky account. So we have two Acrisians and Newt. I want to free my that was my first Acrisia actually from clan boss so I can build it and relentless and faster for everywhere else in the game but if not I have the second one and Newt 
little bit of bragging <laughs> here, but yeah. Uh, but what I'll do, I'll try to replace Acrisia with an ally attacker. Because in our example here, thinking about how to increase the damage, ally attack or counter attack champs will cause more attacks from the whole team, especially from frozen, frozen Banshee to put more poison on the clan boss. So the only ally attacker I have is Morag, who hits hard as well. So I'll play around with the options. Now the, the speed tune works perfectly on Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare. I just need to change the options a little bit to make sure I'm doing enough damage because a Frozen Banshee might uh, miss a few poisons if it's on a Force Affinity. So I want to make sure uh, that I have enough damage to always comfortably do those two key and one key Nightmare. You see here it's working like, like a charm. Let me speed it up a bit, yeah. And then if we go towards the end, you'll see here, what's the point that you want to get to for the two key? Uh, the two key range is 35 million, okay? But realistically, you want to get to 40 millions, more or less, and my phone locked, of course, I was recording this on my phone. You want to get closer to 40 million to make sure that differences in affinity or bad runs won't make you miss the two key range. So you see here, I got to 35 points and it's still uh, five turns before the unkillable team finished. I think I got to probably 38 million is a good range. So I got my two key, it was a perfect run, a perfect tune. Let's go back to the game now to talk more about it. A couple of things that, that are very important here. And I'll tell you, when I was trying the Python comp, the first comp here, and I did change his masteries again, I was using this mastery and this one to make him go faster when like basically the, the buffs drop or someone is scaled or drops in health, you cannot use these. As did with Jedi and everybody uh, explains, you cannot use any masteries that manipulate the turn meter, they will throw your comp off sync. So that's why I had to redo his masteries when I was trying to use Python. It's a waste to use him in that comp, but just I wanted to explain this. For anyone else, like let me check probably my first Acrisia. Why am I even giving here accuracy? Uh, no, that's not a good clown boss. Probably I'll see it on. So forget what you just saw. Okay. This is the perfect um, like clown boss masteries for everyone. Except for example, for Frozen Banshee, you want to make sure that she extends the poison. So you have to give her the support tree for the accuracy and the debuff extension. Yeah. Uh, but for everybody else, only the dealing damage sets, how you said. Uh, your clan boss masteries. The only important part is the speed, as you can see. Beyond the speed, try to give them some crit rate and crit damage. You don't want accuracy on a man eater because his decreased attack doesn't matter and it's just a waste of a debuff. You want to fill it with poisons if you can. This was my thought process of how I got to that two key um, ultra nightmare and one key nightmare, how I can push further into advancing my secondary account. Hopefully, if you are in the same place, you got some value out of this video. Again, a huge shout out to the people who helped me um, develop that final comp. Uh, Rugby Runner, my clan mate, and uh, Sweet JP. Huge shout out to you guys. Everything will be in the description below, including the timestamp, so you can jump between comps if you need to. I hope this hope video was helpful. Keep playing Raid, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.